And we are back on the chosen journey with Big Money Grip, Steve Carsey. Steve, we are in Chapter 36, and we're now on to the National League for the award winners. Yeah, uh, talked about the American League and, and those guys and winning the awards. And uh, the National League is a little bit more cut and dry, but, uh, you know, some <clears throat> some really good players who had really good years uh, and, and looking forward to uh, talking a little bit more about them. So, guys, we've been talking about all season. You know, my original pick to win the World Series were the St. Louis Cardinals. I thought they were going to finish one and two in the MVP voting. Goldschmidt did take it again. Paul Goldschmidt finished with 380 points. He got 22 first place, eight second place votes. But Arenado finished in third. It was Manny Machado who finished in second place. And Machado has been doing quite well on that free agent signing. I think San Diego's got to be thrilled to death with him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you kind of knew what you were going to get with Manny Machado. He's, you know, he played like that in Boston, you know, had got traded to the Dodgers and had a little rougher time in a bigger market and then went to San Diego. Baltimore, they gave Baltimore. him a, Oh, sorry. I, I, Baltimore, then to LA right. and then over to San Diego. Boston so, wishes, wishes they had. I know. Did I say Boston? You I said just Boston. have the green monster in my, in my mind, uh, going to Cooperstown in the, in, in the, uh, summer next year so uh yeah so uh baltimore then to la where you know it was a little bit more higher pressure and then he goes to san diego and has just uh been a a tremendous add to that team um and and being a mainstay in the middle of the lineup and and just having really good consistent years so yes you're right uh i think they're extremely happy with the signing uh, it was a big signing when they signed him, and uh, he's produced to the levels that they've expected. And Goldschmidt, you know, I, I, I thought there'd be a drop off after he left Arizona, to be honest, and he's taken it up a notch. And he's really found a good home in St. Louis, loves it there. And you know what? Uh, just he was so impressive, so consistent all year. We were talking Triple Crown for the longest time. With or without the Triple Crown, this guy's your rock, this guy's your MVP. I think they got it right, and kudos to them. And Arenado was not far off, but I think what I think as far as not splitting up the votes, but I think the fact that uh, Goldschmidt got so much of the publicity, I think that probably knocked him down a little bit. Whereas if he was on a different team, he may have gotten a few more votes. Yeah, well, Goldschmidt's a pro's pro, right? I mean, he comes to work. Uh, he's just a blue collar guy who plays every day, puts up good at bats and just quietly goes under the radar. Um, you know, he did, did it in Arizona, and then he did it in uh, St. Louis. But year after year, when you look at the back of his baseball card, you can see the consistency that he puts up. Um, you know, so for him to win this MVP and have consistent years, I think they got that right. Um, you know, and not that you couldn't go wrong with Machado or Arenado with both of those guys, but uh, I think Goldie just has been the most consistent throughout the year of 2022 and uh, is well-deserved. Now you look at the Cy Young voting and you can say, wow, St. Louis could have finished here with the MVP and the Cy Young winner. Cause uh, you know, looking back at the, uh, at the old uh, rosters and how they were constructed. I, I mentioned to you uh, when we were off air about Sandy Alcantara and uh, I completely forgot he was a Cardinal man. They know how to produce pitching over there. He got traded at the time and uh, you got to be saying for the Marlins, uh, they're celebrating the streets because he got perfect 31st place votes and he's your Cy Young Award winner. And Max Fried, Julio Arias on uh, the Dodgers had great seasons, but this was your Cy Young Award winner. They got it right again. About to say the same thing that just came out of your mouth. They got it right. Uh, this guy was tremendous the whole season. Uh, he put up the innings. He put up the strikeouts. Uh, this guy's got tremendous stuff. Uh, and day in and day out, the consistency that he showed uh, every fifth day when he took the ball uh, and pitching deep in the games. I mean, I don't know how you can go wrong. Like you said, uh, you know, Urias and Freed, tremendous years. Um, again, you look at the overall body of work. Uh, those other two guys have a team behind them that will score them runs and get them some wins where, uh, you know, Sandy had to go out there day in and day out every fifth day and understand that, you know, he really had to put together a solid seven innings of two runs or less to have himself give himself a chance to win because the, the production from the Miami offense wasn't always consistent like the other two guys. So, again, you take all the numbers into account and you look at what he's put up 
and they got it right. Uh, congratulations to him. His numbers, Alcantara, I mean, 2.28 ERA, 228.2 innings, 23.2 more than the next person. Struck out 23.4% of hitters, walked only 5.6%. Fourth highest ground ball rate, like 53.4. Like this guy is just a monster. And if the cards have to draw on their sorrows, they can be joined by San Diego because San Diego gave up on Max Freed. And, you know, you make these trades and, you know, you and I talk about time. You never, ever know where it's going to go. But you you try to win for today. You give up a prospect, even a highly touted prospect, and then they go off and win an award or they finish second. It's got to hurt a little bit because, man, San Diego would love to have freedom that rotation now if they could. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think many teams can go back and say, we wish we would not have traded this. But for every prospect you trade that works out for another team, how many of those prospects do you trade that don't work out when you get somebody back in return? So. There's always two sides of the coin, right? I mean, you, you're you going to, you know, lose trades. And you never know if you lose a trade until three, four years down the road, right? Now we can talk about how Sandy has become this unbelievable pitcher that if the St. Louis Cardinals would have kept him. Uh, but, again, on the other side, how many of these teams have traded guys away who are high-tatted prospects that have just faded away? and they got in return something really valuable. Remember when the Tigers got Miguel Cabrera, and they said to the Marlins, here's a list of our prospects. Take as many as you want, you know? And they dove into the bargain bin, and they said all these guys can't miss. Well, they kind of miss. So yeah. the third guy, Julio Arias, man, just all I can say is consistency, steady. Dodgers are really happy with him. Nothing else to say about him. Just awesome and good on him. Yeah, absolutely. I seen him as a 16 year old in in a ball when he first came to uh, the Dodgers organization, and you could see how mature he was for a 16 year old pitching, and and how much he knew, and uh, you knew he was going to be a good one uh, down the road, and and he really is. Now, when we look at the National League Manager of the Year, I was surprised, but pleasantly surprised because my vote actually won it out, and. Buck Walter took it. I was sure Snitker was going to take it on the Braves or even Dave Roberts. I didn't see this one coming. But you know what? Uh, with the pressure that's in New York and everything that's around it, uh, he was a steady voice for them. And I think he earned it. Yeah, absolutely. I and, mean, you know, Buck brings credentials. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, he had managed before and he's taken teams to the playoffs. Um, his style is probably a little bit different, a little bit more old school in, in the way he uses guys. and and whatnot but uh you know to get the new york met team to play the way that they that they did especially early in the season later in the season things happened and and they kind of tailed off and and they lost they, they lost in the first round which is you know a really hard way to go down but uh again overall for the regular season he was able to keep them consistent he was able to get them to come out and play hard uh play every day and uh you know they had a, a great regular season and, you know, Braves also had a great year, obviously, and the Dodgers. And it's uh, we don't count playoffs in this, as we talked about. But I got to say, the Braves got to be really happy with Snitker and how he's done for them. Dave Roberts gets a lot of flack. You know, they say with that payroll, with that team, you know, anybody can win with there. It's a lot of pressure. It's a big market team. And, uh, you know, he, he's damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. You know, it's a really hard position to be in. Every single one of his decisions are always overanalyzed. So I, I don't know if I'd want to be in Dave Roberts' shoes, and he still comes out there with a smile on his face. So he still wins. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's got the team. They put together, uh, you know, a very consistent, competitive team year in, year out with the dollar values that uh, that they're able to spend. Um, you know, again, you know, they, they lose Bellinger. Maybe they get a judge. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be one of those things where, uh, you know, <laughs> they have the they have the money to do it. They have the money to compete with the Yankees on on offering him something, uh, as does San Francisco. Um, you know, does the hometown uh, home state thing come into play, or does the Yankee thing come into play? Anybody's choice on that, um, and and we'll see at the end of the day. But again, uh, going back to Dave uh, Roberts is yeah, it's it's a tough position to be be in, but I think anybody would would trade spots with him uh, knowing that he's going to have a competitive team a year in and year out uh, to, to work with. 
And summing up today's National League, because it was, uh, I would say, fairly straightforward in this in this league. Less controversy, certainly. I think the manager position maybe was the most controversial. In Rookie of the Year, we knew it was going to be a Braves rookie. It was just a question of who. And Michael Harris III ended up taking it. And I think well-deserved as well. So uh, over Spencer Strider. But Brendan Donovan had a nice year as well. But the Braves were getting all the uh, attention this year, those rookies. And well deserved. And uh, man, how much an embarrassment of riches is it when you have not one but two rookie of the year candidates on your team? Pretty neat, eh? Yeah, it's crazy. It's just like the Cardinals having two MVP candidates on their on their team, right? I mean, first and third base, and then the, the Braves have these two guys: one pitcher, one center field in the middle of the diamond. That was a really good year for Harris, right? I mean, uh, tremendous year, winning the uh, rookie of the year, and then and also getting extended for fifty, sixty, seventy million. Uh, as a rookie, it's uh, something to be proud of. And, and you know, obviously all the hard work that he's put in is, is paid off. And, you know, now he can come out and just play the game uh, and, and kind of uh, not not have too much pressure on himself uh, when he when he goes out next year. You know, people say, oh, you know, the the players are so foolish for signing those contracts so early on. Uh, look up John Singleton, one, one, a player I love watching from a young age. Still around, by the way. He just got protected from the uh, Rule 5 draft, but uh, still plugging away. But he got that big contract back with Houston, and it did not pan out. So sometimes when you take the sure money, it's not the worst thing in the world. Like Look at any sport and that whole betting on yourself. How many guys had career-ending injuries, season-ending injuries when they bet on themselves? Sometimes you take less money and just take the sure money because it may be gone tomorrow. You never, ever know. A guy's about to sign a contract and then something comes out from their personal life and all of a sudden there's all sorts of attention and that doesn't help either. So there's a lot of thinking that goes into those contracts. So if I, I don't know how you feel about this one. I'm going to throw this one question at you. If I'm a rookie early on, I'm signing a team-friendly deal, even if it's five years, because I'm taking my sure money because not that I'm not betting on myself, Probability says if I'm that good, that next contract will be there, but I want that sure money now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just uh, the amount uh, of money that they are putting on the table for you. And if you're very comfortable with that over the course of, uh, you know, the five years um, if that you brought up, if it's a five-year contract for X amount of dollars, uh, what is my potential earning value to what I am going to make with this contract that they're offering me? And that's why we have agents. That's why they know the numbers and then they can direct you. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's the player's choice. And if he feels comfortable taking that dollar value, uh, good for them. And Michael Harris second, just to uh, also note here, 19 home runs, 20 stolen bases, center fielder. Wow. I think there are 30 teams that would grab that in a second. So the, the stats is, are mind-blowing. And, uh, I you know, again, Alex Anthopoulos, man, he comes in and they find these players and they know who to sign and they, they the guy just knows how to win. Like, you know, there's some executives, that whoever they touch. And that's where you look at uh, Philadelphia. They just signed Dombrowski to basically a lifetime contract unless the Nashville team gets, a Nashville city gets an expansion team in which he's allowed to opt out. But, you know, an executive that's won everywhere he's gone, and they said, hey, we're not letting you go. So uh, Dabrowski, another guy that just knows how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to have those guys at the top. But uh, one thing that gets overlooked is you have to have a really good player development uh, department to, um, you know, get these players from a young age when you get drafted, a great scouting department to bring these players in and then develop them the right way. So when they do get to the big leagues, that you have the embarrassment of riches that you're talking about. Incredible. Incredible. Well, it's been a great 2022 season. We're eagerly anticipating as the Christmas season approaches and those big free agent signings before the new year. And uh, the one thing I would tell any of those players, the longer you wait after January 1st, the harder it gets. You don't want to be in Boxing Day mode. So those, usually the the first number is the best number. So I tell them, get signed up before Christmas and go enjoy your Christmas season stress-free. That'd be my advice if I was their agent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but sometimes it doesn't play out like that. You know, I mean, you still got to there's a pecking order uh, that teams have in their mind of they want this guy. But if they don't get this guy, then they're going to get the next guy that they want. And if they're still on the board and they can offer more money. So it becomes, uh, 
you know, when this domino falls, then we'll kind of move on to the next. So sometimes players don't have the choice just to sign right away. Uh, and, you know, you know, some do, some don't. But at the end of the day, if, if a lot of these guys can sign when they want, they will do it. One, one of the chapters will bring up Mr. Scott Boris. I'll bring you some of my favorite Scott Boris quotes. And maybe one day we'll have him on to grill him because I'd love to hear his thoughts. But uh, I'd love to see that man's bank account because he's made a lot of people a lot of money. Absolutely. Very good agent. Uh, probably one of the best that's ever done it. And he would agree with you on that. Steve Carsey, Big Money Grip. Always a pleasure. The man on the shirt. And we'll have you Thank back you. soon. And uh, next week, and we're going to have a mystery topic. And uh, as we're going into 2023 and lots of baseball news, as always. Absolutely. Look forward to it as, as, as we continue this uh, journey down the road. Keep it real. Peace out. See you later.